remember buying your first teen-rated game? I sure do. While maybe not a big deal to some kids out there, for me, being able to move up the ESRB ladder from E to T seemed like a step towards maturity and adulthood for young Ian. And what could be more mature and adult than driving around on motorcycles and beating the living daylights out of each other? My cousin and I purchased Road Rash 64 together. We split the price, which means we probably didn't know anything about the game beforehand. It was just what we could afford at the time, and it's what we saw at the store. That's a review for another day, perhaps, because today I'm going to be taking a look at the very first Road Rash game for the very first time. First. Road Rash for the PC is a 1996 enhanced port of the original Genesis game released in 1991. While both versions of the game have copious amounts of roads and questionable amounts of rashes, the enhanced version added character selection, a reputation and gossip system, and of course the always welcome FMV cutscene. I've never been one to get too excited about motorized vehicles, but were I a bike enthusiast, this seems like it would be really cool. They're driving their motorbikes at high speeds, running from the police, assaulting each other- Whoa! Don't try this at home, kids. I think they almost touched each other there. Yeah, this is all high-energy excitement. Especially whatever this is. This is pretty much the coolest thing I've ever seen anybody do. After the intro, there's a warning screen that boils down to Don't try this at home, you stupid moronic children. And then we're at the main menu. Thrash mode allows you to quickly hop into a race without any fuss. Mano a mano is where the multiplayer lives. And the restroom is the options menu, where you can do things like customize your controls, which I highly recommend doing because the defaults are completely insane. We'll be spending time in big game mode, where you can compete for cash and upgrade your bike. First up, though, we'll have to select a character. Right off the bat, you'll notice the terrifying art style. It kind of looks like Mad Magazine meets terrifying funhouse mirrors in public restrooms, I don't like it at all. The characters are all pretty much just as ridiculous as their character art would lead you to believe. An ex-con, a retro punk, a psychotic with rabies. I went with Slim Jim just because it reminds me of the guilty pleasure snack food, and also this mouse right here is pretty cute, I guess that's reason enough. From there, we arrive outside the Panzer Club and Ollie's Scooterama. Scooterama is a bike store, but we really need to do some races and earn some money before we do any shopping. Inside the club is just as trashy and unsettling as the rest of the game so far. I mean, who really wants to look at that? You're able to schmooze, which lets you chat with the other riders. Well, you don't really talk to them, they talk to you, and their statements range from things you might find in a biker fortune cookie to just... Why? This game is instantly better when it gets away from the menus. I love these FMV clips that play before you race. I find them strangely motivating. Oh my god, this is awesome! I wasn't sure what to expect, honestly. It's completely different from Road Rash 64, and I've never really looked back at the franchise before. And while this is totally different from the version I grew up playing, it is also totally spy. Your goal in Road Rash is to win the races, obviously, but the fun of Road Rash comes from beating the crap out of your opponents, the police, pedestrians. You can even try beating the crap out of cars if you want, though it rarely works out in your favor. I should note that you need to exercise extreme caution while assaulting police officers. If you lose a fight with them, they bust you and you lose the race. And if you destroy your bike from crashing too much, you get wrecked, so drive smart. Well, as smart as you can while assaulting everyone around you, I guess.
While Road Rash's menu segments have copyrighted music tracks from various artists that I'm going to be using as sparingly as possible in this video, the actual races are accompanied by some bass-heavy MIDI tunes that sound great as they're sound blasting through my speakers. Whether you win or lose, you're treated to some FMV, and these scenes rarely disappoint. They're just so over the top and stupid, they can really take the pain out of losing a race. I really like how the track winds around in these city segments. It looks super cool, and I think it makes driving feel a lot more exciting than it actually is. Even though the road is turning left and right like crazy, you really don't have to do much to try and stay on it. You can't just drive straight forward and stay in the middle of the road, really, but steering is a lot less frantic than the track makes it seem. Once I started looking at the game as a type of endless runner, I started to get a lot better at it. Focus less about staying on the road and more about avoiding cars and also beating the crap out of everybody, yeah! I was pleasantly surprised to see that the first victory FMV scene I got featured a female biker and copious amounts of jean crotch cam. Just can't get enough of that sexy jean crotch. But the real story here is this guy. Look at this guy go! Apparently, when you're in the club schmoozing with these schmucks, they respond to how you treat them in the races. So if you beat up on a particular rider too often, they become hostile towards you, or so I've read. I really have no interest in looking at these people any longer than I have to. I feel like I'm doing my best to try and play big game mode while at the same time trying to avoid big game mode. Doing a quick race in thrash mode is fun and all, but I like winning money in races in the main game. Win money for placing while racing, but be careful because along with upgrading your bike, you also need to use money to repair it if you wreck, as well as pay for fines if you get busted by the cops. If you run out of money, it's game over. It adds a bit more pressure to the races and gives you some goals to try and achieve, which is always welcome. As you win races, you also unlock new levels, which isn't quite as exciting as it sounds. It basically translates to faster and more aggressive opponents, as well as the tracks becoming longer and more dangerous. I wish there were some completely new tracks to unlock, but this is still pretty cool. The city segments are nice and all, but the game's visuals really shine when it opens up a bit. Everything that's happening here on this screen, I love it. The visuals are perfect. I love the scenery, I love these trees and these bushes, I love the heavily pixelated pedestrians, and I love beating the crap out of these fools that dare challenge me, Ian. The Biking God. When I'm not kicking you in the face, I'm driving around and kidnapping women, which makes me a winner. There are some things that happened during some races that really caught me off guard in the best of ways. First off, the road occasionally branches into two separate roads and you're able to drive on whichever you choose. This is super cool, adds some replayability to these tracks, and I love that it gives me more scenery to look at. Secondly, although the twists and turns of the track are a bit inconsequential, you can actually launch yourself off of hills if you're going fast enough, which is a ton of fun until you crash horribly. And speaking of crashing horribly, when you fall off your bike, you have to run back and go get it. I was not expecting this at all, it's not something that happens in Road Rash 64, but it totally should have. Along with making crashes a bigger time penalty, it also opens the door for you to run over other bikers that are trying to get back to their bikes, delaying them further. And if a cop catches you while you're off your bike, you're immediately busted. And yes, of course, this also begs the question, can you run the bulk of a race and still finish? And so I began to run. 
I ran, I ran, and ran, and, uh, you know, funny story, you may not expect it, but I ran track one year, I think it was junior high, because my parents insisted that I play a sport. I went to a total of one track meets and wasn't even halfway done with my race when everyone else had finished. It was humiliating, I still remember it so vividly. Anyway, I quit immediately after that, and I think that may have been the last time in my life that I ever tried to succeed at anything involving physics activity. But I'm not gonna give up here because I see that finish line and it's time to prove to myself and to everyone around me that I finish what I set out to accomplish. Uh, oh. Well, I'm not doing that again. That took forever. And that's Road Rash, a game that is pretty awesome, I won't lie. My only real complaint is the art style of the menus. I know that it's gonna appeal to someone out there, but as far as I'm concerned, it's just something that I'm putting up with. If you move fast enough in the menus and don't schmooze anyone, it's not terrible, but like, the character models in the game look less like grungy bike gang members and more like the cast of Lost in Space wandered onto a racetrack. I don't know, there's just so many metallic and shiny outfits that it makes these gross menus seem even more out of place. The gameplay though, that's a ton of fun. It's gonna be a go-to time waster for me for sure, and I can only imagine that you'd like it even more if motorbikes really get your engines going.